Uh, time for us to head to the voicemail of Truth and Reason in this one um, about what the Browns offense will look like with Deshaun Watson. Hi, this is Kelly from Olmstead Township. My question is, do you think uh, Kevin Stefanski will call RPOs now that uh, Watson's the quarterback of uh, Deshaun Watson? I didn't see any call with Baker Mayfield. I saw one play that may have resembled a uh, RPO when uh, Baker went to hand off and then he kept the ball and ran and it looked like a broken play. But do you think he'll allow uh, Deshaun Watson to uh, call RPA, RPOs, give him the option of run, run or pass? And I also wonder if Baker Mayfield was not – none of those plays were called RPOs. I wonder if that was because of the scheme, because of the uh, – offensive style that Stefanski wanted, or was it Baker's skill set that uh, Stefanski didn't have uh, confidence in? Thanks. All right, so Jeff, I'll let you answer that. I have a couple thoughts, but your thoughts on that. Yeah, uh, it's a very good question, and uh, a couple of good points that he made in there, too. Um, the thing I will say from, from watching Deshaun Watson, uh, I did cover him with the Texans for the first two years of his career. Um, you got to be careful with asking him to run a lot. This is a guy, he's had two knee surgeries. He's also had some, some other injuries, uh, high ankle sprain along the way. He's not the, the most sturdy guy. He's not as thickly built as what Baker Mayfield is. You got to be careful with him uh, because uh, you know, with, when you've invested $230 million in a guy, you need him to be on the field as much as possible. You don't want him taking hits. One of the things that, that one of the criticisms that Texans media and fans had of Deshaun was that he doesn't always avoid the hits all that well. He, he needs to learn to protect himself a little bit better. We haven't seen him play in over a year, so I'm not sure that that skill has gotten any better. So you do need to be careful with it. Can he do it to, to the point there? Yes, he can, and he's quite good at it. He's very good at selling the fake, very good at understanding how to, to impact the defense and manipulate it to where it, he, he will make the right decision to keep it or to hand it off to, to Nick Chubb or Kareem Hunt. Uh, and those guys both can, can work very nicely off of it. So I hope that they put it in as a wrinkle. I don't want it as something that they're going to be doing a lot of. But like on a third and three, heck yeah, man, dial that up once or twice a game. Um, but it shouldn't, be a, it shouldn't be something that you're using a lot of because, uh, quite frankly, Deshaun's not built for it. Um, even though he's good at it, it's, it's not something that you want to risk um, on an excessive basis. But uh, um, as far as what using Baker in that role, and whether it was schematic or Baker, I'm, I'm going to lean more on, on the scheme. I don't think that's something that Kevin Stefanski really wanted to do a lot of. I also don't think that's necessarily something that Baker's good at. Yes, he's very good at the play-action fake and the rollout, the, the bootleg, that type of thing. As far as a designed runner, that, that's not Baker's strength, and I think, that, uh, I think Stefanski knew that, and I also think that he loves... Loves that that passing game off of the option more than a run game, um, and that's that that seems like something that's more Stefanski than Baker related. Although Baker's skills probably play into that too. Yeah, the other thing I would say is it, it, a lot of times a run pass option you're throwing quickly over the middle. Baker's not tall enough to do that. You know, he he's he, he, you'd have to get him deeper, which is going to compromise the RPO just because of his size. Definitely. So that's, that's the other thing I would say about that. But again, um, a great question.